Not seeing that. This is an iPad Pro and I don't know. Well, we can hear you, love uh, or something. Okay. This is more than I got at my last Zoom meeting. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> I had to call in last time. <laughs> yeah. All right, David. Okay. Good. We're good. Baby steps. <laughs> exactly. All right. So we're live on the YouTubes uh, this morning. So I want to thank everybody for coming out um, for October 2nd meeting. I would like to uh, call the meeting to order and try to keep this um, pretty streamlined today. I know Akiko's got to drop off at 845. I've got to drop off right at nine. So, um, so I know that uh, we've got a lot to cover. So we'll get right into it. So um, we'll call the meeting to order at 804, Emily. Um, okay, thank you. And I, I need to do better about sending out the links and everything for Zoom. I know I just kind of grab old links from, from Joe and sometimes that gets missed and that's my fault. So we'll make sure I get those out a little bit better, a little bit earlier to you guys as well. Um, but I did send out the minutes that Emily put together for us. Uh, I don't know if everybody had a chance to review the minutes. If you have, We'll look for a uh, motion to approve the minutes from the September meeting from anybody. The, the, I don't know if this yeah. matters, but at the end of the August minutes, it said the next meeting was November. Okay, thank you. So that needs to be corrected. Not a problem. So we'll, can we get a motion to approve the minutes with the correction uh, stated by Carol, please? So moved. Thanks, Rob. Second. I can second. Thank you, Akiko. So <clears throat> all in favor, uh, give me some kind of high sign with a thumb or a, uh, so I can see you all. Uh, actually, thumbs up. Uh, Carol, you can Carol. give me an eye. Yeah. Thank you. You're good. Yes. <laughs> so approved. anybody opposed to the minutes uh, with the approval from Carol? <laughs> Seeing none, uh, the uh, minutes passed. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we will turn the table over to you for a uh, mayor's report. Uh, if you have anything, the floor is yours. We'd love to hear from you. I have no report this morning. I know you have a very busy agenda, so I will skip my report and let you guys get right to your business. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I know you got a lot going on today, um, and uh, we appreciate you being with us as long as you can today. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, Matt, I forgot you on the agenda because uh, I pulled an old agenda up and I had left that off. So you are officially back on the agenda forever and ever now. Um, so we'd love to hear a housing report from you and see how things are going in your world. All right. Uh, I got a, just a short report. Um, worked with Joe on doing an all online uh, campus housing fair with BGSU. Um, getting information distributed to them regarding fair housing laws and the BG transit system. Um, and then uh, I will have a radio interview on the 13th with Clint as well regarding the housing programs. Um, and that's my report this month. Awesome. Any questions you guys for Matt? If you can listen in on that radio talk on the 13th, I highly suggest it with uh, Clint. Um, a lot of those are very informative and Matt, we appreciate you going on and spreading the word about what your department's doing for us. That's, that's great. Thank you. So, uh, any questions for Matt? All right. The, Thanks, the Matt. I appreciate it. Go ahead, Emily. I'm sorry. Well, the radio show is October 13th. October Correct. 13th, Matt. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. October 13th, 730. Okay. 730. All right. Thank you. I know you'll all be up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody, appreciate that. Thanks, Matt, appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, financial report, one Mr. Joe Fawcett. There is no change. Uh, we haven't made any adjustments to the 2020 budget, so the HRC still has available a little over $1,000 in your 2020 budget. Excellent. And is that finalized budget now, uh, Joe, or <laughs> is that still kind of in the works still? I know we had talked about possibly losing a little bit of money, so. I would say we most likely won't be making any adjustments, um, uh, but you know, you know, honestly, we're we don't know for sure. But so okay, thank you. I don't think it's likely. So okay, appreciate that update. I don't think we need to vote on that report, do we? Because we don't get a copy of that. Okay, 
Excellent. Uh, I'm going to skip the next one here uh, on your agenda. Uh, we'll come back to that. Um, let's uh, the chair report, which is is me. Um, so just want to make sure we keep the, the right direction of what we're doing with the HRC. I think we're doing a good job with our conversations. I think we're moving in the right direction of, of what um, our mayor has had in place for us. Um, I'm, I'm hoping uh, in the next couple of weeks to maybe get a little bit of the mayor's time to just make sure we're doing uh, the right things for this commission, make sure we're going in the right direction with what we want to do with his vision as well, the city's vision, and making sure that we keep this a, um, you know, a city directed and city of, um, a, a city commission that we're, we're all going in the same direction. So um, I don't really have much more than that to report. I'm just um, honored to, to have all of you with us on the team still. And, and I think, like I said, I think we've got a great organization and I think what we're doing is going to make a difference. Um, and I think what we're already doing is, is making a difference. And I hopefully that we can continue that with some of our listen and learns um, that we can get scheduled. Um, sounds like most of that's going to be virtual right now. So if we can get a bunch of uh, people onto a Zoom call or something to that effect, that will be uh, excellent for all of us. Um, so that was uh, just all I had to report on that. Like I said, Mr. Mayor, I'll reach out to you in the next couple of weeks and steal 15 minutes of your time uh, if we can find it and uh, just talk with you about, you know, making sure that we're going in the right direction um, on what we, you know, what the vision is that you had as well coming over as mayor. Um, I know each person has a different vision of what this this commission is, and and you know we want to know what your your vision is versus what Mayor Edwards' vision was, and and make sure we're going in the right direction. So, I'll reach out to you on that. So, nothing David, more, Emily, on that. Go ahead, Mayor. Sorry, David. I was just going to say thank you. I'll I'll be happy to sit down and talk with you, but I would just say in general terms that um, I, philosophically, I believe strongly that um, all of our boards and commissions should have the ability to work autonomously. Um, I don't really have, um, honestly, um, any intent to necessarily impose upon, you know, your group, um, my visions or, um, you know, my priorities, quite honestly. I think that, you know, we are um, on the same page on most all of the things that you're talking about right now. And I would say that, you know, I'm really quite pleased with the direction, mm -hmm. you know, that the group is currently taking. I'm pleased to see that the group is, you um, basically uh, seizing the moment um, and, and um, exerting leadership within our community to uh, uh, take advantage of your, of your platform to establish um, conversations. I think that this is a great opportunity for the Human Relations Commission to, to lead in our community on behalf of the city. And I, I think that there's great value in the diversity of your group and the, ver and the, the various opinions um, and perspectives that you bring. So um, I will be happy, David, to, to sit down and talk with you just in general terms. But I did just want to preface that conversation so that everybody can be aware that that's really my philosophy on these things is that it's, I think that autonomy is important. Um, and we really need to um, allow the community to um, benefit from the diverse um, experiences, life experiences, professional experiences of all of our boards and commissions. So. I'll just encourage each one of you to continue to um, attend and contribute um, because each one of you individually is a great benefit and asset to not only this commission, but to our community. Yeah, we appreciate your trust on that. And like I said, we're, um, I think we've got a good, a good handle on where we want to go. I just want to make sure we keep the focus on what we're, what we're about. And so, yeah, we appreciate your trust on, on taking this in the direction that we feel like is going in the right way. So thank you. Uh, Emily, do you got a couple seconds to talk anything about NIOT? Uh, yeah. Um, so um, this week, Monday night, was our community conversations on hate speech versus free speech. Um, it was a pretty uh, amazing panel, um, just really knowledgeable and experienced panel. Um, I think in the end, um, what we learned is that there's really a very, very thin line between hate speech and free speech. And a lot of times it looks exactly the same. Not really what we want to hear, but we also talked about how, you know, how to empower members of our community to make sure that we are standing up in the face of hate when it's occurring. So 
So that was um, Monday night. And then um, we're working on our next community conversation, which is going to be civil discourse some around this idea of how, how are we communicating? And how can we um, disagree in an agreeable way? And, you know, especially as, you know, in this current climate that we're in, um, but that will take place at the end of October. That's our goal. Awesome. I think uh, we all kind of witnessed that this this week. If uh, nobody saw the debate, uh, <laughs> so you're better off if you didn't. Um, <laughs> so, so um, <clears throat> but yeah. So I think um, we we all can uh, relate to that fairly uh, quickly as as it happened this week of uh, of respect for each other when uh, through speech. So I it's, um, hopefully we can um, all learn from that. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Anything else from NIOP that uh, we should know about? Um, you know, we did, yesterday was our monthly meeting and we spent a lot of time talking about the debate. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the messages that were um, presented um, from our president in the debate. And two ones that we spent the most time on and, and I, I just felt like most of it, I'm looking at the group here and who you are and you're knowing who you are, um, but I encourage, each one of us that every time we get a chance to reassure uh, in our network and our conversations that the voting process is secure. There's already built in a set of checks and balances and it works. Um, there's no need for people to feel like it's not going to work. Um, but also the other part of that message is to encourage everybody to vote early um, you know, walk-in voting begins on October 6th. Registration is open all the way up. I mean, if people have not registered, we can still do that all the way up until October 5th. Um, and that, you know, in-person voting begins on October 6th and they encourage people to actually walk into the Board of Election and cast your vote as early as you can. If you are, um, if you've requested an absentee ballot, I would not rely on the mail to return it fill it out and again, walk that over to the Board of Elections and drop it in the drop box, personally, in person. Um, I just think that 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 are th those are things we have control over. Um, this is not to imply that we know what's gonna happen on November 3rd, we don't, but as, as citizens of, of the United States, it's a right that we have and we have a lot of ability to make sure that we can exercise our rights. So that'd be my message that you know, that we would make sure that we continue to spread that message every chance we get. Perfect, thank you. Remember, and that's something that, you know, uh, my wife had said too, is, is we're very fortunate in this country that we do get one vote. Um, there's a lot of places that don't get that and how you use it is up to you. Uh, you know, we're not gonna, you know, nobody here on this call is gonna direct you to vote one way or the other, just, know that you get a really cool privilege to be able to do that um, and how, you know, be sure you be able to, to activate that and do that. Ellie, will you get to vote this year or are you still? Yeah, my birthday is like six days before election day. Yay, so awesome. <laughs> so so it, I, I, since I've been 18, I have not missed a vote um, and I don't ever plan on missing a vote, but it's 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 pretty cool the first time you go in, you're like, hey, check me out, I'm an adult. So it's a, it's a, it's a fun time and, and I'm excited for you to, to be able to express your views um, through your one vote. So that's awesome. So um, cool. Whoops, I'm still here, sorry. Um, so we had put on the last call, I don't see uh, Tony on the call, but we had put on the last call as well, something that um, as a discussion around the show, the 13th, the video series on Netflix. Um, personally, I would rather leave that on the agenda, Emily, until Tony can join us and Justin and, and we have a bigger panel uh, of sure. that. That's just me personally. If anybody is against that and would rather talk about it today, I'm more than willing to open up that uh, and have a conversation around that as well today. And again, the next time we you can, Amy. You figure out how to get me video. Okay. Sorry. 
Hi, Carl. Sure. That's all right, Carol. Um, Amy, and, and I really appreciate you putting together what you did. That was such a cool piece um, to be able to talk around those points. Um, the questions that you brought to the table were, uh, I brought those to Jody, uh, you know, the other night after we watched it again and just said, what, you know, what do you think? And she's like, this is, this will make you think. And that, that was awesome. So thank you so much for that. That was really cool. Um, so I know that I think I sent those to everybody. Um, I also sent a quite an extensive list um of items that were i can't find it right now but that were um anti-racist uh you know blogs and podcasts and i mean there was a bunch of that stuff and that was used a lot and ellie may see some of these through school but that was used a lot through bowling green schools um and their equity groups um because you i mean you will notice in our schools our diversity in our local schools is very minimal um so a lot of our students don't don't feel like they're faced with it because they don't see it. Um, so that's something too that if you get a chance and there's a, a piece in there that might jump out at you that you find interesting that you would like to to look through, please do so. Uh, I looked through a couple of them um, recently, and some of them are are pretty powerful. Um, some of them, in my opinion, didn't weren't really pertinent to this group, to be honest with you, and some of them were. So um, feel free to look through that list as well. Um, to, to see where we're at uh, with, you know, your views on, on some of those things and feel free to jot those down and, and bring them to our next, next meeting if you want. Um, as for the um, honor roll um, and the, oh, I always forget the name of the, the drum thing. Uh, Emily, help me out. It is the... Um, drum major. <laughs> yes, thank you. Drum major. Um, I always what want to say it? that, but then I think band, and I think that's not right, and I think <laughs> but it's, it's, it's so I know it's right. Just go with it. Um, so yes, so drum major award as well. I, uh, we have I think thought of a couple of people and tossed a couple of names out. Um, I I don't know, Joe, if you can jump in and help me out when we normally pick the those recipients. Uh, the the honor roll is typically a quarterly award if you have one if we have one okay and i i emphasize that because i don't want i don't think you need to for lack of better terms cheapen the award right feeling as if you have to award it okay. um, the drum major for peace award is typically handed out at the martin luther king uh junior tribute that hrc hosts in january okay and it's usually about right now that the HRC is starting to really think heavily about the award itself, but then also getting into your planning cycle for the event. So the keynote speaker, um, if you're going to have music there, lining up with Michael Penrod um, at the library, or if you want to use the veterans building, you could also do that this year. Yeah. Um, so. Um, so sorry to get you off topic there, but yeah, the drum major for peace award is awarded in January. Okay. Thank you. We needed to know that. Um, can you give, cause I, I honestly can't, um, can you give a 30 second synopsis of what that person entails, um, that we should be looking at for the community? So everybody, cause I know we have some new members, uh, on the call that might not quite sure know what that is. Yeah, the Drum Major for Peace Award is um, an extension of the Honor Roll Award. So if you think of uh, the, uh, I guess, the characteristics or the specifications for the Honor Roll Award, which are community involvement and outreach uh, for the betterment of the Bowling Green community, the Drum Major for Peace Award is kind of like the next step up. Okay. Uh, last year, it was Dick Edwards for his work um, as he was mayor. Um, so what I what I'll do is on the HRC website is a uh, you know one paragraph little short uh, description of the the drum major for peace award. I'll send that out to the group just to make sure that you have it uh, you. along with a copy of the application because you know much like the honor roll award, you know for you to consider the drum major for peace award, there is a little bit of an application to go into it. Okay. I appreciate that. And I think everybody can start thinking of somebody. So before our, uh, our November 6th meeting, um, I would really like maybe one, two, three candidates if we can. Um, uh, 
to get you know to get on the ballot if we will um because if and then like i said i'll start working on the planning part of it with um it may be difficult this year because we don't know what january is going to look like yet um if we're going to be able to even have this meeting in person or what it's going to look like so i don't want to cheapen the day or the event because of covid i think it's still important that we uh honor um you know our candidates for this if we can come up with a couple of them um so be thinking of that think of people that you know in the community that have made an impact um across all lines um so that i think that that's something that's important as well um like i said the mayor was a good recipient last year for this um he was very involved with our commission as is our current mayor um being at meetings doing things like that so i think that and in and having something to say um you know, uh, publicly about everything that's going on as well as, as what uh, our mayor's done now. So I think it's something that, you know, if you're looking for ideas, um, kind of think of that direction. Um, that necessarily has to be a mayor, but it could be a teacher that's impacted you. It could be somebody you work with that, you know, is, is very involved in, in other organizations, maybe a representative from NIAP, maybe a representative from um, somewhere else in the, the university or our city. Um, so we have a lot of uh, amazing people in our town um, and we're very lucky. So think of some people that might come out, um, you know, you might just run into in a conversation. Um, Rob may run into uh, during a church, whatever it might be that, you know, he's thinking of people right now. I can tell his brain's going about people that he comes in contact with weekly um, that, that make an impact. Um, in his congregation. So th there's some, so there's some ideas that, um, that to kind of throw out at you to, to kind of make you get your wheels turning a little bit. Um, and as okay. for the listening, yeah, go ahead, Emily. Um, I, I just had a thought. I think about the impact of 2020 yeah. on everybody. And, um, all, you know, I mean, I, you know, looking at our previous award recipients, um, they have been very more, much more high profile. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's okay, but I, I'm looking also at the circumstances we're all experiencing here in, in, in response to COVID-19, and I'm thinking so much about the frontliners, mm -hmm. um, you know, the people who are running the food banks, the, yep. you know, the nurses, that you know, the um, first responders, the folks that continued to work every single day, um, and maybe our award could look something like more of a collective, a I don't know, again, I, I just a thought, um, yeah. something for us to, you, you mentioned, oh, there's so much good going on in our community, um, but that, that really is what we've lived in 2020, that we relied on these people to keep us all safe, to keep us healthy, to keep us going, yep. uh, you know, and regardless of who you are, they don't care, right? So it, it's, yeah. you know, and that's something that, you know, because when we're looking to make sure that we're, you know, combining it across, you know, all genders and races and everything else, like you said, that they don't care. Like their job is to, to keep you healthy and to take care of you. Um, yeah. And that could even be for somebody who you know that's sewing masks um, to try to give mm -hmm. out to, you know, first responders, whatever it might be, um, you know, that they don't care who that mask is going on. They just know that they're doing the right thing to try to help, um, help all of us. Um, and with the announcement today of, you know, our, our president being positive and his wife being positive, that's something that, you know, we've got to look at as I think we've done a great job as a community of, of masking up um, and, you know, not to get on the soapbox about that, but I see the students just doing a really good job. I know we've had a lot of cases, but at the same time, I see those students walking down the street with their masks on and they're outside and it's one kid walking by himself down to get a cup of coffee and he's got his mask on. I'm like, good on you, man. Like, that's so cool that you're seeing that. Like, I'm like, I'm impressed with, with the direction that our community has gone with, with all of this. And I don't think we've had a, and I'm sure the mayor hears it more than all of us, but I, I don't see a big pushback or a fight. Like, you know, I'm sure there is in some places and 
Rob probably sees it a lot with church. If you're, you know, you're having your services outside and now you're looking about maybe going inside and affecting your attendance or something, what does that look like? That's, that's tough. You know, you don't want to affect how many people you get your message out to daily or, or weekly. And that, that's got to be tough for you guys as well. But I think as a community, I think we've done the right things. And as a group, our small group, I think we've done the right things as well to try to promote who we are. So, um, but yeah, so I, I think it's, um, I think that award is going to be really hard this year because I think there's so many deserving people that really have an opportunity to benefit um, from us and from us benefiting from them. So um, I think there was, uh, I think it was um, uh, Dick Newlove when he won Citizen of the Year seven, eight, nine years ago. And in his speech, he said it, you know, BG's given back to me so much more than I've given BG. And I thought that that was pretty powerful. And that's always stuck with me is that's who I think of when I think of this award is, you know, who is, who is not humble, but who is also at the same point saying, okay, this is, you know, this is my town. This is where I live. This is where I raise my kids. This is where, you know, I, I I'm involved. Um, so I think that it's, it's like you said, and, and I don't see why we couldn't and Joe can jump on me on this about this, but why we couldn't give it to a group. Um, if it is first responders, I know it's hard to give just one award to somebody, but at that time, I don't know. So what do you think, Joe? Yep. You, David, you're exactly right. The um, HRC has awarded the Drum Major for Peace Award to organizations before. Perfect. That were first responders, you know, that is not outside of the norm. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's important because I think, you know, there's... Um, we can recognize a whole organization or a whole group, like you said, food pantries, whatever it may be that have really stepped up during this time. Uh, I know Brown Bag has done an amazing job in town um, with what they've been doing. Uh, I've seen lines of cars when this was at the top of, of, of the, you know, the pandemic, which, you know, I'm not saying it's not still there, but it, when people were really struggling early on with this and not what no didn't know where to go um, wrapped all the way in the Montessori parking lot and, and everything else. So it's um, the churches have been, pushed to their limits with their food pantries as well. And, and so, but people continue to give cause that's just Bowling Green. That's who we are. So, um, <clears throat> so that's good. Uh, I'm going to open up the floor real quick for any discussion on any topics that you guys may have any good news going on in your, I love to end things with good news. That's just our organization. We do a good news call every single day at three o'clock, which is, I know it sounds excessive, but literally every day at three o'clock, we do a good news call with 61 different campuses. And it's just awesome because uh, we pick three or four people and they say, Hey, what's going on good in the world. So um, if anybody has anything that you're involved in that you want to share that's going on, um, any events coming up that you want to share that, that are going on, Ellie, anything positive in the schools that you want to share? I know things are a little crazy for you guys right now, and things are maybe changing in the future here in a couple of weeks. We don't know. So, I mean, it's, it's tough. And, um, but, yeah, I'd like to open it up here for a couple of minutes, see if anybody wants any positive news out there and send anything good our way. This is where you all talk. Yeah. Can I give you one? Yeah, go for it. Uh, Sergeant Adam Scaff um, uh, is doing a phenomenal job of really hitting the ground running uh, to get out to meet with the, the various groups and organizations and individuals. Um, I think he's taking a very smart approach to this, and that's rather than um, maybe large uh, organized kind of meetings. He's doing a very uh, focused uh, 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 approach to this. So he's meeting with individuals and maybe two to three people. Um, and to me, that's about it's uh, perpetuating the relationship building, which I think is the, the key approach to this. Um, so I, I think uh, between Sergeant Scaff and Chief Hetrick and Deputy Chief White, um, they're doing a very, very good job of, of doing what the community is asking them to do, which is listen, learn, and um, try to educate what they do. That's awesome. That's kind of news we need to hear. Thanks, Joe. That's awesome. So, because that's some stuff that we wouldn't see as a group, maybe, you know, we don't know who he's talking to and um, how those conversations are going. I know that uh, Justin's put him um, kind of in charge of that to make sure we're getting out. And that's, that's awesome to hear. Thank you so much. That's cool. I think it might um, be if, if you're open to it, I think Sergeant Scaff would be um, certainly open to meeting with you. If, if yeah. you'd like him at a future meeting, maybe he can give you 
an update on they, yeah what's done. That's exactly what I was thinking is having him come in to, you know, November, December meeting um, and just let us know, give us a, you know, five, 10 minute synopsis of how it's going, you know, any kind of obstacles that he's come into that maybe we can help him as a group and, and all the positive things that he's done as well. So. And yesterday there was a great story. Um, the young man, Eric Ryan, who's yeah. um, bicycle. Was Congratulations. Stolen. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, it was such a wonderful ending to a very sad story. And the police department did a fabulous job with that. Um, and I think the community stepped up according to what I read. There were tips given and um, that was great. And if anybody's ever met Eric, he's just a really cool kid. He's, um, he's, a fine young man. he's uh, you know, does track and field. Um, he's a shot putter. He uh, does distance on the bike. So, and that bike is fairly old. I don't know if you guys knew that the bike is 15 years old or so. It's not fairly, I mean, it's, it's an older bike and he's had that bike for a long time. And um, so I talked to Joe Hudock and Ellie might remember Joe or, or no, Mr. Hudock, but he, um, he was track coach here for a couple of years. And, and when Eric was kind of at his prime with that stuff a couple of years ago in high school, he was um, very involved with him in, in track and field. And um, his mom is very vocal. And, and I knew that, that we would find the bike um, because his mom and dad are very passionate about uh, making sure that Eric is safe as well. So, um, but yeah, great, great job to the police department. Um, you know, they just absolutely knocked that out of the park. That was pretty exciting to, to see. I had a feeling as much media got around that and social got around that, that, that would end in a good, good story. So I was just hoping that they didn't part the bike out for something and, and that would have been bad. So, but yeah, so that's, you know, great positive piece, Emily. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Anything yeah. like that, that you guys have, or any events, Rob in the church that we need to know about, or Amy, anything going on? But I, I don't know if this is, um, I, I guess it's good news, but we, we've been doing the drive-in church and we tend to get a lot of pets. People love coming to church with their animals. So we're doing a blessing of the pets this Sunday oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and encouraging people to bring their dogs and cats and whatever they can fit in their car. So um, we're, we're going to see how that goes. It ought to be an interesting experience. That's awesome. Very cool. David. Uh, yes. I want to give a shout out to Rob and his church. You know, since March, um, he and his uh, his congregation have done a really good job. I think of thinking outside the box of maintaining services in a um, COVID uh, cognizant way. So, um, you know, hats off to Rob for really thinking how he can continue to provide that service to the community that I think people need right now. Yeah, in a, in a good and, and safe way. Thanks, Joe. That's awesome. Thanks. Carol, I can't see you, but do you have anything to add? Um, not that I can think of. Okay. I'm not pretty isolated back here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amy, anything Indeed. going on in your world that you want to discuss or share? Nothing major. Okay. I'm just still working with brown bags. So. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. That's a huge organization. Thank you. Kiko, I know you got to get going here soon. Anything you going on in your world? Oh, going for teaching and uh, the classes, you know, I'm now online. They're going well. And uh, I have, you know, I started the Japanese club, you know. Uh, normally I have, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, the, the, what I call lecturers and then performances and you know, I was somebody from Japan and like a last four was, I was very busy, yeah. but because of the COVID, you know, uh, a little bit more quieter side, but uh, we started the Japanese club on, on, on the campus and uh, we have the meetings on the Zoom. Okay. And, you know, it's a good, at least in you know, a connected. Yeah. You know? Excellent. Yeah. Awesome. I think going okay. Thank cool. Um, hey, Dave. Yes. Before we disperse, I was yeah. hoping maybe we could go through some of the plan for the community read. Sure. Yeah, that's that was my last thing I was going to actually oh, okay. leave with you. So sorry. No, that's I fine. Was, you're you're I up. So the, the oh. I, I did send out a uh, kind of a community reads thing update from Emily that she's been working tirelessly on. Um, so I want her to just kind of touch on that. And um, I think she's probably bringing it up now. So she sent some notes over and I think I forwarded those all to you guys as well. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Okay, I'm not sure if I can share my screen, but if you have the document in front of me, 
first of all, I just want to say that I am certainly not assuming that I can make decisions for this group. I look around and I, I look at who's the members of this group and the talent and the knowledge and the experiences that you have. Um, it, you know, I really want what we, you know, the product product that we create, I want it to reflect this group. Yes. Go ahead, Jeff. I just made you a co-host, so you should okay. be able to share your screen. Thank you. Thanks. So, um, so just some things, um, I don't, if you had a chance to look it over, I don't know, but I'm really honestly open to hearing feedback, suggestions, ideas. Um, and there's a couple of things I would really love to get um, answers for moving forward. N number one, I, and, I'm, and I really honestly am not clear on what our committee is able to do. I understand that we can't meet outside of our, our, our um, official function and things like that, but are any of our HRC members allowed to join the planning team at all? Because um, um, we're at a point now uh, where we need to start making decisions and moving. Um, this is already kind of morphed into a bigger thing than I even imagined. We were hoping to start in October, but it was so big, um, we were not going to be able to do a good job and launch it in October. So we, we went that direction. We thought we want to do a good job, not just do it ad hoc, but we want to you know, cross all the T's and dot all the I's and maximize the quality of the event itself. So is it possible for HRC members to work on this together or no, or can I just get a clear, can, so like right now, our, our planning group is Lee Nicholson, Jolie Sheffer, Don Chenu, myself, and then we've also included Michelle Raines from the, um, the public library. But, you know, I'm looking around this group and I see all the talent here. If we had additional help, that would be so wonderful. But what is... Joe, I don't think that would be a problem if we had somebody on this. Do you see that that I don't think that would be an issue that we're because it goes with our mission and our target of of, you know, kind of what we wanted to do. Um, and I would have no problems jumping in, Emily, and, and sitting in and helping out if, if Joe, you don't see an issue with that or um, because it wouldn't be I, I wouldn't feel it would be talking about our what we do as a group per se, as much as it is what we're trying to get the message out. So Joe, correct me if I'm wrong there. No, yeah, David, I think you're exactly right. And in fact, my recommendation to you is the planning uh, partner probably should be HRC heavy. Yeah. Um, my only caution is don't go over four because then you have a quorum um, and it would be subject to the uh, sunshine laws and you know the public meeting requirements. Yep. Um, so it would yeah, certainly you can do that. It would just add a layer of complexity to the situation. But my recommendation is yes, you should probably have, you know, three to four people on there from HRC. Okay. And and like I said, Emily, I'll gladly uh, volunteer to help out. Um, I'm not going to ask for volunteers right now. I would love to. If you're okay. interested, please reach out to Emily. I don't want to put anybody on the spot right now that says, oh yeah, I'll do it. Um, but if you're interested, please reach out to Emily. Um, just so you guys know, too. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, that would be great if you if you really would like to be on the planning committee. Um, that would be awesome. And then I thought also another option might be for me to send out a task list that if any of these tasks that need done, you know, really uh, resonate with you, like something you'd like to take on, maybe you can just let Dave know, and Dave can let me know if this is something you'd like to help with. Yeah, because um, there's going to be a lot of yeah, things like, that Emily's. Yeah, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot. Yeah. And, and also, you guys, just so you know, um, the mayor has made a generous donation to help purchase some of these books as well. Um, we did, he did reach out to me. And, and so his commitment to this project is as big as any of ours. And we want to thank him, you know, in our meeting for that as well. Um, so, so you guys do know that the mayor has, has committed um, to help, you know, financially with a little bit this right out of his his pocket. So we want to thank the mayor for that, number one. And, and number two, it just shows the support that we're getting from our mayor uh, in this project okay. as well. So go ahead, Emily. Yeah. I, I wonder, um, Emily, can you send this one to us? The one yeah. you're sharing with us? You know, this, yeah, yeah would you be able I to send it? Attached. Yeah, I if, Emily, if you just want to send that to me again, I'll send it to the group just to be oh, safe. Okay, well, I'll send great. that back. Yeah, out. I'm interested yeah. in, you know, just. 
Yeah. No, I as, as far as the no no time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very yes. good. I, keep I can going. yeah reach out you know to more so the students type. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So um, and this is really also like me, Nick Lee, and Jolie have already. There's their grad students and their oh. and their students at BGSU have committed to lead the reading sessions. Um, one of the areas that I that we are still um, don't have um, a solution for right now, and this is one that was strongly recommended by Anthony, is that we had um, people of color working as facilitators and or participants in each of the um, reading sessions, which you know is a really important thing. We have to make sure that happens so that we can ensure that there's the perspective of people of color and that they're heard and they're acknowledged. And more importantly, that that understanding is part of the collective community understanding of race and um, what occurs in a community. So we reached out to the Black Student Union at BGSU um, and then also um, the under, undergrad. Um, USG is gonna help us out that way. And I was gonna also ask Anthony to see if he had some folks that he wanted to help, you know, he could recruit through his network with Brave. The other part I wanna caution him, and this is actually as a result of a direct conversation um, with um, some of the professors at BGSU is that there's, um, and I'm going to say this, in the, this is an understanding of allyship. This is an understanding of what it means to be an ally, but there's diversity fatigue for people of color. They are asked over and over and over again, you know, they want to help, they're willing to help, um, but because there, there's so few um, members in our community that, that, um, <clears throat> that, you know, they're asked to be on every, um, employee search committee, they're asked to be on interview committees, they're asked to be on um, committees that give um, guidance. And so, you know, and they're all very willing to help, but they're stretched very thin. That's, that's the reality. So it's just something that we want to keep in mind um, and we'll do our best to make it happen, but we also have to be sure that we're not um, overreaching, overtaxing people in this effort. Um, so just something to keep in mind. So the, the other little question that I need answered is, um, we want to provide an opportunity for virtual um, registration and also a reflection and question kind of a, like a Google Doc or a Google Form or something like that. Does the city have uh, a way that they like to um, do that? Is, or is there another format that's available for us? We don't know, but we, we were hoping to get that set up. If I could get an answer to that, that would be really helpful and we can get going on that. Is there a way, Joe, that we can put a link on the commission's page through our website by any means or no? Well, and it kind of goes back to the, another question of moving down to the accessibility to the sessions and working with the Committee on Aging and also the Public Library to help. For those folks who are not comfortable, you know, two things here. We know that there's going to be people in our community um, who are not comfortable with the technology or, you know, um, you know, especially part of our older population who would really love to participate in this. Um, so we wanted to be able to provide an opportunity for them. So I do need to have a question for what would be the virtual online platform that the city would like us to use? Is it Zoom um, or something else? And then um, for those people in the community who were without technology or don't feel comfortable with technology, then we're also gonna offer a phone-in session. Um, I, I would like to hear from the city how they feel about it in person in a large room so that we can ensure social distancing if that's a possibility. I know the Committee on Aging was not able to support that. They can't promote that because of the state requirements for them. And so maybe that's something we just don't do at all. Yeah, um, I probably would try to avoid that at all possible, Emily, just to be safe. Um, okay. I, you know, I think so, that, that might be tough, but the call in, um, what I think about is interesting about that is even if they're not tech savvy, if you will, they can still call in during a Zoom call and use the same, like there's a call in number during Zoom. 
So right. they could they could still call in and be part of the conversation, maybe not be seen uh, on a camera, but they would still have access to just calling in and, and talking uh, through Zoom at, at that time, I believe. So you know, we could do something like that, unless it's just a call in, like a, like a conference line at that time, if we want to use that. Okay. All right. Um, so I think the answer is that we're just going to go with Zoom and we can use the city's account for this for the virtual sessions as well as the phone in. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Is that okay? Well, let's yeah, I'll get the okay from Joe on that. I don't know if he still okay. stepped out. I'd lost him on my camera here. So okay. All right. Very good. So um, just continuing on then um, the C committee on aging, um, they were wonderful over there. They will facilitate the registration through their lunch, their, their meal delivery. Mm -hmm. um, and also the, the public library is willing to um, facilitate registration if, for folks who want to call into the library and they can actually register um, through their, their staff will take the registration information. So I thought I was really pleased with that. So we're making lots of progress that way, but we want to launch the registration here pretty quickly. Um, okay. The other thing I wanted to talk about, and this is, you know, again, our mayor has been very grateful with, I mean, gracious with his donation um, but the reality is, and we started to check on books, already the Wood County Library has jumped on this. They are reaching out to all their consortiums to see about books. But this title is in pretty um, strong mm -hmm. demand. And there's a limited supply available. So, you know, um, and either for borrowing books or even for purchasing books. So this, I, I think we, we talked about buying books and giving them to people. Um, so I think as a group, we have to decide what do we want to do here? I, Is there I mean, a I, digital subscription, Emily, to the book at all? Yes, yes, and there's, there's several of those. So those will be available. Um, and you know, we wanted to try to meet the needs for folks who love to have you know, a book in hand you yep. know, you've got it here, but there's also audio. There's also um, online, the digital, the eBooks, all those are available, just not very many. Okay. So um, the library now, we think we were calculating this the other day. We think we have in hand, we could have 150 of these books in various forms available, but um, she, um, she, Michelle Rain will work with her purchasers but she said, we got to do it now. I mean, do sooner we, rather than later. I think the biggest thing is I would hate for us to go out and buy a hundred more books and we get 125 people registering for this. I hope it's 250 or a thousand people. You know what I mean? So I guess the, the thing is, is historically, how has the community reads project worked with how many people have actually signed up for something like this? I think this is totally different because it's a different topic um versus yeah. you know some of the other books that we've had so but i think uh, you know with us i think if we pop the registration up and we see that we're at you know we get 150 really quick then what do we do is, is you know do we have to go to some digital online reading or whatever it might be um for people but if somebody wants a physical book um you know like i said i want i and i think the mayor would agree that the money that he's donated to go to the community uh, the books for the end of the community, not necessarily, and I don't want to outskirt the, the university by any means, but I think people in the community that are interested in, because the HRC got the promotion out um, to those in the community, I think that those, that, that money should be used to help those in the community that maybe can't afford to get the book or can't find the book um, and, and reach out to them that way, I think would be um, the best use of, of those funds. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how much the books are, so I don't know how many books we can get with the generous donation from the mm -hmm. mayor. So that's something else right. we got to look at as well. Uh, just a quick yeah, go ahead. note here. Um, on YouTube right now is the entire audio book for free. Perfect. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's another link too. If somebody awesome. wants to do audio, um, it's there the whole, the oh, whole okay. seven hours and 40 minutes. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> That's one work day. Wow. You can listen to a whole book. So let's just, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I mean, Amy. That's there, awesome. There's times when I just like to listen to the book too, but that, you know, so, but yep. I, I, what I, what our goal is to make sure that there, no one is left out. Everybody right. has an opportunity who wants to participate. So 
So, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, gosh, we might have a thousand people, but Michelle, you know, gave me a little reality check. <laughs> yeah. your, your question. Um, you know, she typically has, like the Wood County Committee on Aging has 20 or 25 people that yep. participate regularly in their reading. Yep. And then Michelle was um, a little bit <clears throat> more conservative with her estimates. She, you know, they get 20 sometimes, up to 20. Yep. But uh, again, and then this doesn't even count into the university. They're, it's being promoted throughout the university as well. I, I really, I'm at a loss to try to decide or estimate how many participants we would have. Yeah. I think the 150 sure. number is is a pretty, I, I would be really happy with that number, to be honest with you, just knowing sometimes what goes on in the community, how people get busy, people are working, people, whatever it might be, people start into uh -huh. it and then drop out of it. But the topic is so relevant now, um, and it's at the forefront of what we do and see every single day, um, that I yeah. think the earlier you guys, and we can get the registration up, I think the earlier we can get that up, I think the better off and the more attendance we'll have with it, participants will have with it. So, okay. But right. yeah, so you, I'll, I'll, um, I'll reach out Emily to Joe and, and kind of find out okay. how we can do it online um, with the registration, see if we can't figure out a page or, you know, on our, on our website and we can draw people because it, it, number one, it's driving more traffic to our site for people to see what we do. Right. I think a lot yeah. of people don't know we exist in this town and it's an important commission that we're on mm -hmm. and that we serve. And if we can drive traffic to the website and people are like, oh, I didn't know they do that. And I think that that's something else that we can, it benefits us. So when we're out there talking to people about, oh, you're on the HRC, what is that? Oh yeah, I saw that on the website when I registered for the book. So um, yeah. I think that that's something that if we can drive traffic to, I think it's you know always positive. That's just my marketing brain going, but so. Yeah, oh, this, would, this is the kind of knowledge and the expertise that we need for sure to make it a really good event. So one more little thing before you go, and I know we're getting close to the end, but I, I want to start with the promotion, get that going. And um, so I love your feedback, you know, from the group. There's two, these were created by um, one of Lee Nicholson's grad students, and they're really, you know, pretty, they're nice, they look good. Um, but again, I want to hear from you guys what you think. So the first one that I'm going to share is, it's all of the information um, in a horizontal format. So here you go. Oh, and I don't know about you, but on my screen, um, the part to the right-hand side shows all of our partners. Yep. So it starts at the very top, the city of BG, and then the university sections are there. The, the, um, those, are those, those are Lee Nicholson's and Jolie Shepherd's um, departments at BGSU. And then, so this is, this is the flyer that we've got going now. Um, right now, I just put my name in as a registration, but I'd really love to put a, you know, a link to registration or a way to register um, instead of my name. And then, and then the other version I can show you is simply, it's exactly this, but the only difference is all of this information up here in the light blue appears um, rather than horizontal, it appears vertically. So it's just a little different take on it. But do you guys have a preference? So we can. I think start. if the message is the same, it's got our city logo on there, which I think is important. Do we have a logo for HRC? Uh, you don't have an independent HRC logo. It's just the cities. Okay, that's fine. So it's up there, you know, right across the top, the city of Bowling Green Human Relations Commission presents. Yep. Yeah, I like that. Read. Okay. And then. Joe, Mayor, you guys have any comments on that or anybody else? I like it. I think it looks really great. I think okay. it's uh, so this it's is the format. Message is good, Emily. Yeah. I think there's a little, you know, a little blurb about the book itself so people have a chance to find out about it. Um, and then I'll update the information with registration as soon as I know what that is, and then we can get going on this. There's another version of this that's really, that might just appear in newsletters that we promote or flyers. Um, it's more focused on the book itself though. So we Joe, have I think you had, I think Joe, I think you had just stepped out of the room. Um, is, is there a way that we can set up a registration on our HRC page through the city that we could put that link right there? Or is that, and then that registration could be driven back to Emily or myself or, 
um, you know, we could check it or whatever it is to find out how many people have registered, or is that something we don't want to get on our page? I think we can do that. Um, you're certainly exceeding my IT capabilities, but uh, <laughs> I, I could certainly as put, mine. <laughs> yeah, I could put whomever in in touch with our IT staff. Um, if you have you know an external site that you're running the registrations through, that would be easy. I could certainly put that on. I know how to do that, but if it's something that we have to build you know organically to the site, you know that's that's something outside my capabilities, but. You know, I think IT could probably figure it out. Emily, do you want to jump on that, or do you want me to call on that? I can I can talk to IT about that. I'm I'm not I'm a little bit computer illiterate, but I think I can try to jump in there and see what I can do. Yeah, I just wanted it to be something that was supported by the city. I don't really have a ton of knowledge about it either, but you know, however we do the registration, that it's it's a format that the, that you know the city could support, and then also the other one answer that we need is. What form? Is it Google Docs? Is it Google Forms? Is it MailChimp? Is it, you know, something to um, facilitate registration, an online registration? And Joe, I'll get a hold of you and, and see if I can't, you know, get in touch with your IT guys or something and, and we can try to come up with something if that's okay. Yeah, I'm going to, after this, I'll send you an email, David. Sure. And I'll, I'll include our IT staff on there. Thank you. Summarize what you're wanting to do, and then I'll just get out of the conversation for you. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Hey, Emily uh, and David, I just wanted yep. to mention, depending on your timing on when you want to start um, publicizing this, um, I would be happy to share this information during my report to council. Um, we have a meeting this coming Monday. Um, okay. The next one, of course, then would be two weeks after that. So. Okay. I can depend on your timing. If you want me to do so on Monday, I'm happy to do that. Um, if you could just let me know, um, and if so, send me a copy of the flyer. I'm I'm more than willing to do that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, That's awesome. 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 That'll work. So uh, Monday's the seventh, right? Monday, October seventh. Yeah. Is that correct? No, no. Yeah. It. yeah. Thank you. Okay. So th I apologize. I didn't mean to monopolize all the no, time, but I really not a problem. wanted to get input feedback um yeah this is good know. this is good stuff because this is kind of the direction we need to be listen and learn and and what we want to be doing and i think this is something that i know um we can all get behind and, and like i said the fact that the the mayor's made that donation already is is you know that's huge for us so um that that's great so well we are right at nine o'clock to be uh respectful of everybody's time. I do have another call at nine, unfortunately, with my boss, which I usually if I'm late for that, I hear about it for about a week. So, um, <laughs> but I want to thank everybody for jumping on. Um, can I get a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting, please? I move that we adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Carol. Appreciate it. A second. I'll Rob. Second. Thank you, Rob. Amy. Right. Thank you, Rob. You thank you. I mean, this is only four of us here, five of us here. That's a quorum, right? Okay. Yeah, we're good. Gotcha. So, okay. Bill, thanks for joining us as well. And Mayor, thank you for staying the whole time with us. I know you got a busy day. Have everybody have a safe thanks, everybody. Uh, weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye.